Hello, everyone. Welcome to Reclaiming My Life. My special guest today, the beautiful Pastor Pearl Hale. Welcome, beautiful. Welcome. How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. We are also Facebook Live. You look absolutely gorgeous. So do you. Thank you, Queen. You're welcome. And thank you so much. Look, we're talking about bruised to be used. Somebody's been bruised. But I tell you what, I know you got a story or two, but you don't look like what you've been through. Amen. Yeah. So let's get into the book. You know, you have a book, Bruised to be Used. And today, yes. you know, look, I'm excited about it because this is reclaiming my life. So, you know, many of us have been bruised, but the part when you reclaim and you're able to share mm-hmm. that testimony of how you overcame and how you trusted God and tried God and triumphed with God. Come on, Pastor Pearl. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, uh, thank you so much um, for inviting me on your show. So my book, Bruised to be Used, is about my many experiences with people who've had horrible stories of abuse and brokenness growing up in New York City. Mm-hmm. And when the Lord put me in a place where I didn't want to be, I was doing health insurance. Uh, helping people in some of the most challenged neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I met so many people in my travels, in my producing shows. I met people who've had horrible stories of abuse. But then God uses these abuses to shift one's thinking, to become a power, so he can make you a powerful testimony to be used to help others yes. through what you've been through. And so it was out of that experience, I mean, mind-blowing um, stories of people and families, abuse, brokenness beyond measure, mm-hmm. where God can still come in and heal, heal that thing, yes. heal that wound, yes. touch that sore, you know, you put a Band-Aid on the sword, but after a while it heals. Mm-hmm. So when you've been bruised and the Lord took me up in Isaiah uh, 53, uh, the 53rd chapter, the third verse where it says he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we're healed. Yes, indeed. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, Jesus took those horrible bruises, that horrible beating, Mm -hmm. so that God can use him to redeem man, so that he would have the power of transformation to to be used to heal others through what he himself had to endure to help humanity. Yes. Thank you for that. You know, I've never heard it you know, put into a uh, perspective like that, you know, so thank you so much for that. Amen. Yes, Bless indeed. You. Yes. You know, when we talk about bruises, you know, we're talking about bruises, emotional and physical bruises. So, you know, Pastor Pearl, when, you know, you encounter people who have been emotionally and or physically um, abused, bruised, you know, How can you share with us, you know, because we have some listeners today who are actually going through, you know, emotional and physical abuse right now. What can you give them about, you know, the other side of it? So the other side of it. So some lessons in my book um, is that when you want help, you have to acknowledge that there is a problem. And you have to seek God, but you also have to get professional help because he used men and women to help us to heal. And when you're on your journey, there's a story. um, I give you one example in in, in my book where this young lady 
all her life uh, from a child, her first, the first male she's introduced to her father calls her a fat, ugly bee. Mm. She was called that all her life. So that's all she knew. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, that, and that's all, you know, and you have that ingrained in you, you're going to need help pulling those layers off. Absolutely. Now, Thank you for that woman of God. Now, the people around you, this is the mistake we make. The people around us are not equipped to help us. We need life coaches like yourself. We need therapists. Mm -hmm. We need people to help us take down the layers because we're not necessarily equipped. You need the spirit, as they say, and the letter. Yes. You need the spiritual side, but you need the practical side so you can understand where it comes from. Generations of coming from her mother telling her that she was yes. abused. It's generational. So you can't crack that nut by yourself. Right. You need help and you need to acknowledge that you need help and not be ashamed of the abuse mm -hmm. because God is using you to be a powerful tool. And in the future, just as we're sharing or speaking, right. God have people for you to help shift and transform in your life mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, look, you teaching and preaching today. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm loving this, you know, and also, you know, I saw in your book, you know, we talked about leadership, you know, being bruised in leadership. Give us an example of being bruised in leadership because, you know, we don't talk about leadership enough, you know, and especially in the churches, mm -hmm. you know, we feel that um, it's not to be spoken of or, you know, sometimes it could be situations where, you know, like we heard um, Pastor Pearl during the sister check in just a month yes. or so ago when we talked about, you know, um, I think we had one of the speakers was a, a pastor's daughter and has some yeah. things going on. So right. talk about being bruised in leadership. Sure. So one of my chapters is being bruised in leadership. You know, a lot of times people talk about church hurt and being abused in leadership. Sometimes we have to examine what our assignment is uh, in ministry. And a lot of times leaders have to make hard decisions, mm -hmm. uh, hard calls. And so a lot of times people are not wrong. It's just you have to understand what is your assignment. Are you assigned to a particular ministry? Is leadership being um professional and how they handle things. For example, sometimes when people are insecure in their leaderships, mm -hmm. they will, people get hurt when you have insecurity at the top. That's detrimental. Now, all of us have thoughts. Um, so it's not to say we're not equipped to lead. It's just that, for example, I've had people tell me that um, leaders have called them out publicly. Mm -hmm. You did this, you did that. That's unprofessional, first right. of all. And that's not spiritual because Jesus says, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee? Mm -hmm. It's hard being a leader. It's hard because everybody don't have the skill set of being a problem solver. Right. And a lot of times in ministry, when people are not good at solving problems, they start being dogmatic. In other words, um, you can't disagree. You can't agree to disagree. You know, I had a conversation um, with someone on a hard topic. And I said to them at the end of the day, you and I have the right to disagree. But if I see you on the street, I'm still going to feed you. Come and on. vice versa. I believe you'll do that. The problem with a lot of people who've been bruised in leadership and what we have to examine. And even myself, when I was doing my shows and my plays, you know, you have to be tough. Leadership demands that you come up in a certain way. And because there's so much coming at you, you're dealing with finances, you're dealing with people. 
People, that's why structures that work, they have people over something so you're not always going to the leader. Because sometimes when a leader has so much on them, they be, they can be snappy. Mm -hmm. They can be rude. And they just, they're just not equipped to handle that. And if you don't recognize, instead of staying in the clouds all the time, oh, God told me that I can do this, I can do that. Jesus said with loving kindness. You're either drawing people to Christ or away from Christ. And even if you have to make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. If I call someone out in the congregation, um, when when you have an insecure person who call people out, oh, you know, you I rebuke you and this and that or whatever publicly and have everybody else disliking an individual. Because, see, they're not at the same level of maturity. Mm -hmm. And if someone loves that leader and he's chastising a person in front of everyone, that particular person is going to get it from within the congregation. And so what people have to understand is that leadership demands a certain level of couth. And you have to understand that sometimes it's not a good fit. It's not. That's the thing right not, there. Recognizing <laughs> when it's not a good fit. Yes. Yeah. It's just not a good fit. And sometimes they're not bad mm -hmm. and you're not bad. Right. It's just God has assigned you to something different. Now, what we cannot do is go in any ministry, if you're talking about ministry or on any job and making up your rules because God has assigned that angel of the, ha the house or that person to that particular region for that particular assignment. Mm -hmm. And that's not your assignment. Uh, I heard this bishop and, and I love what he said um, years ago, bless his heart, uh, Bishop Jordan in New York. He had a sign up in his church. He says, don't be part of the plot, be part of the plan. Come on. <laughs> Whenever you part of God's plan, even in disagreement, you're going to exude loving kindness. Mm -hmm. You're going to have grace. You're going, I, I heard a story, I'm going to give this to you, um, um, Dr. Mancy, and then I'm, I promise you, I will let you have this mic. But good story about leadership. This is good leadership. So years ago, human conflict, first of all, is real. People don't get along. People don't like each other. That's a real thing. Everybody haven't resolved that. The church is not perfect. But in this particular ministry years ago, uh, two individuals got into a fight and they were both working in the ministry. Pastor exuded excellent leadership. They were both talked to and sat down for a period of six months. Mm. They came back to serve and apologize. And you, you see what I'm saying? He recognized there's an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not throwing you away, but you both need healing. Right. Yes. You both need restoration. So he sat them down and not threw them away. And, and so when you have good leadership, see, that's why I always say you have to have the spirit but you also have to have the letter as well. You also have to have wisdom and knowledge for where God is taking you. Mm -hmm. You just can't take for granted God is telling me this and telling me that because sometimes it's not God. Sometimes it's people. Leaders are people too. Yes, yes. And so those of you who are around somewhere, you're there to grow. Even in a bad situation, you got to be tough. Sometimes you got to be tough and it's not the season to run or move. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy want. When you're a life transformational person or someone like yourself, Dr. Mancy, the enemy is terrified mm -hmm. because you bring shift and change. Come on, come on. And Absolutely. anytime you bring shift and change, you're going to be spotted out. You're not going to be able to hide. And so you might be ridiculed and it may be in le leadership, maybe not, maybe just people trying to get you to move, but you got to understand the assignment. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about your assignment. So somebody out there, I feel the Holy Spirit is sharing with me that you're dealing with a bruise in leadership. He said, but don't move. Mm. Watch 
his salvation. Don't move because it's for your growth. It's for you to grow in this situation. If you always run, that's going to be your life story. Mm -hmm. Wait until he releases you from the assignment. Look, somebody in the back didn't hear that. If you always run, come on. You'll always run. It'll be your life story. <laughs> It'll when be your life story. Like you, yes, yes. Somebody, and you can give people thousands of dollars. You can kiki, ha ha, whatever. Somebody ain't going to like you. Mm -hmm. Look, <laughs> y'all see, she's deep. The book is good. Y'all need to get the book. Bruised to be used by Pearl Hale. And um, yeah. Pearl, Pastor Pearl, if you would, please let the people know how they can connect with you, how they can book you for speaking engagements and more. Sure. So you can connect with me. Uh, my email address is info at pearlhellshow.tv. That's I-N-F-O at P-E-A-R-L-H-A-L-E-S-H. -E O W dot TV or, or at the Pearl Hell show at gmail.com. And you can also uh, call me for speaking engagements as well. 646-889-2442. And thank you so much for having me. You are so very welcome. You know, y'all, we needed more time, definitely with uh, Pastor Pearl. But as you've heard her say TV show, we didn't even get into it. She does have her own TV show, The Pearl Hell Show. But definitely connect with her. She has so much to offer. And as you can see, God is truly using her. But let me just leave you all with this. If you have been bruised or if you are bruised from emotional and physical trauma, from relationships, and even, you know, we, as we talk about leadership, if you are a person who has been prayed on and not prayed for by someone in leadership, please know, like Dr. Pearl said, you know, speak up, speak out, unmute, because we want you to know that you can reclaim your life. Y'all be blessed. You have just heard Reclaiming My Life with life coach and author Claudia Massey to get you.